Blessing still flow well, and I, I love, love my Savior, Savior too. And I love, love, love my Savior, Savior, and He loves, loves me too. Yes, he loves me too. And who and I, I seek see His favor, will in everything I do. With him me still of my the shine will in doing his will always never repine healing to him my pray that I feel that my and I love my Savior too will and I love my Savior and he Yes, he loves me too. And who and I, and I see his, his favor, favor in everything I do. And happy to serve my friend, lean on his arm. And rapture will never end, nothing along. Voices will sweetly blend under his charm. And I love my sin. You're too well, and I I love Love. my Savior. Will he he love me too? Yes, he loves me too. And who am I? I seek seek his favor. favor. Will in everything I do? Bless the Savior, he loves me too. Yes, he loves me too. And who and I, I seek see his favor, his favor in everything I do. Amen. As we prepare for a scripture reading and another word of prayer, let's turn to page number 118. Page number 118. Again, that's page number 118, and after which we'll have scripture reading, and then we'll have another word of prayer. And if you have it, let's sing together. The Lord's our rock, in Him we hide, and He's a shelter, shelter in the time of storm. And secure whatever ill be tied, and He's a shelter in the time of storm. And oh, Jesus is a rock in the weary land, in a weary land, in a weary land. Well, Jesus is a rock in the weary land, and He's a shelter in the time. I'm a storm and a shade by day, defense by night, and he's a shelter in the time of storm. And no fear, the alarm, no pulls of fright, and he's a shelter in the time of storm. And oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, in a weary land, in a weary land. Well, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, and he's a shelter in the time of storm. And the raging storms may round us beat, and he's a shelter in the time of storm. And we'll never leave our safe retreat, and he's a shelter in the time of storm. And oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, in a weary land, in a weary land. land. Well, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, and he's a shelter in the time of storm. And oh, rock divine, oh, refuse dear, he's a shelter in the time of storm. Be thou a helper ever near, and he's a shelter in the time of storm. And oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, in a weary land, in the weary land. Well, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, and he's a shelter in the time of storm. And oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, in a weary land, in a weary land. Well, Jesus is a rock 
Back in the weary land, land and ease your a shelter, shelter in the time, time of storm. Amen. I want to thank Brother Slay for that song. At this point in time, please meet me in Matthew. The book of Matthew, chapter 4. Book of Matthew, chapter 4, will be this morning's scripture. We will begin in verse 12 of chapter 4. Give you a moment to turn your pages and to set your eyes upon the screen. Matthew chapter 4. Let us begin in verse 12. If you have it, say amen. Now, when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the south coast, in the borders of Zabalon and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Esaias, the prophet, saying, The land of Zabalon and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death light is sprung up. From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people and his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments and those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic and those that had palsy and he healed them verse 25 and there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from Decapolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea and from beyond Jordan. Let the church say amen. Blessed be the hearers, readers, and doers of his holy word. At this point in time, I'll call Brother Hall once again to lead us in prayer. Let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Dear graceful Heavenly Father, we once again come to you and say thank you for waking us up this morning because we know it was you, not I. Getting us on our way, dear Lord. Even though the body may feel sore and the body may feel weak, but you allowed us to open our eyes up and be here with amongst the saints, dear Lord, that will strengthen us, dear Lord. Give us the energy we need, dear Lord. We thank you, dear Lord, for that. And as we continue on this day, dear Lord, we hope everything be done decent and in order. 
We thank you for your men serving that have been with us for so many years, dear Lord. We thank you for not only him, but his family, dear Lord, that continue to minister unto us and unto them and unto him, dear Lord. We thank you, dear Lord, for that. We ask you, dear Lord, as he brings the message, dear Lord, that he would not be above or below our thoughts and our intelligence, dear Lord, that we may take the message, dear Lord, and use it in our everyday lives. And in those lives that doesn't know you, dear Lord, to come to know you. We're so thankful, dear Lord, for this congregation here at North Shore that you have blessed, dear Lord, throughout the years. We ask you to continue to bless each and every one on the side of my voice and those that are at home, dear Lord. But bless all the Church of Christ throughout the world, dear Lord, that they continue to be on one accord, that we can continue to serve you, dear Lord, freely. We ask you, dear Lord, and thank you again for all the many blessings that you give us on a day to day. And as those that are still traveling here, dear Lord, to the building, we ask you, dear Lord, to continue to give them traveling grace. As those that are traveling afar, dear Lord, we ask you to be with them, protect them, guide them. And those that are mourning this time, dear Lord, we ask you to be with them, dear Lord. Be with the families, Tompkin, dear Lord, many Tompkin. We ask you to be with the family, dear Lord, because when we lose someone, dear Lord, we does not know. We does not know how much it's going to hurt us until that day come. But let us remember the good things, dear Lord, of each and every one of us. Let us remember the things that you have brought us to know and continue to carry us with us, dear Lord, that one day we all must go. We ask you, dear Lord, let each and every one of us examine our lives so we can say in our last day when we come to face you, dear Lord, you will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. This we ask in your son Jesus Christ's name. Let us all say, amen. Living below in this so sinful world and well and hard, the comfort can afford and well striving alone to face temptations. And tell me where and could I go but to the Lord? And tell me where could I go? Oh, where could I go? And I'm seeking a refuge for my soul. Oh, and will be a friend to save me in the end. And tell me where could I go but to the Lord? You know that life here is grand with friends I love so dear. And comfort I get from God's own word. And well, yeah, when I face the chilling hands of and tell me where could I go unto the Lord? And tell me where could I go? Oh, where could I go? And I'm seeking a refuge for my soul. Oh, oh, and will be in a friend to save me in the and tell me where could I go but to the Lord. Amen. Amen. As we prepare for this morning's lesson, let's turn to page number 248. I know that my Redeemer lives. A lot going on uh, with us in our world, in our personal lives. I don't know. First thing, Brother Isom said it's kind of nippy out there. What's nippy? <laughs> it's cold outside this morning. <laughs> Lord have mercy. A few weeks, I think earlier this week, it was last week, rather it was close to 40, and now it's in the teens. That's another reason to let us know that our Redeemer lives. That's it. Uh, through our tragedies, through our, our happy times, uh, we have a good God that we serve. Uh, he spared our lives one more day to be here. That's why we should know that our Redeemer lives. Page number 248, as we bring Brother Atwater up to the podium. If you have it, let's all sing together. I know, I know that, that my Redeemer lives and never prays for me. And I know eternal life he gives from sin and sorrow free. And I know, I know that my Redeemer lives and I know, I know eternal life 
he gives and I know that His holy face may see when from the earth I breathe, and that I know, I know that my Redeemer lives, and I know, I know eternal life He gives, and I know. not made with hands most wonderful to see and I know I know that my Redeemer lives and I know I know eternal life he gives and I know and I know that and my Redeemer God has been good to us. Amen. We are the North Shore Church of Christ. We certainly welcome everybody to come and be with us. To our live audience and all of those who listen to us across the nation, we want you to understand that there is nothing greater than the Lord himself. It is a blessing to be here on today. The last eight days we've had nothing but clouds. And on today the Lord allows the sun to peep through. Even though it's on the cold side, we're getting near December the 21st, when the Lord will declare that to be the shortest day of the year. The sun is furthest from us, but yet and still, it continues to light us up. It's a blessing to be Christians and know something about the Lord and to have a relationship with him. I do want to say that it's a blessing to hear Brother Hall say that his beloved father was baptized and you don't know how awesome that is his dad for many 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 years has traveled to every church in the world uh, but then all of a sudden he realized I must go back to the Bible and let it answer the question and his son was able to get him clarified uh, such that uh, he could make that decision and that's a blessing Somewhat today of my heart is heavy, but yet it's happy. The transition of our beloved sister, Minnie Tompkins. Uh, in 1974, I, being a young man at 29 and a half years of age, at 30, uh, appeared at the YMCA around the corner upon the second floor in the room where we met. And I met sister Minnie Tompkins. And since that time, she has never missed a beat. Through all of the highs and lows of life, uh, she has always been faithful in the ministries of the church. With her quiet self sitting in the corner, but powerful behind the scene. And certainly we're going to uh, 
miss her presence. The Lord decided to shift her into the transition. He sent out a subpoena and called her to the waiting room of the court. And certainly she'll be waiting for the judgment. Parallel to that, as I was in the YMCA, there was another lady that was there, and that is Sister Virginia Massey. Uh, she's with us on today. Haven't seen her in a while, but it's good to see her walk in with her two bodyguards, uh, Sharon and Chris. Uh, they, they were little girls 30 years ago when my wife and I hit these shores. And of course, my son and daughter, they were little kids 30 years ago. I still look the same. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> but the Lord has been good. I was talking to Brother Roberts. Brother Roberts at that time, he was somewhere around 19, 20 years old and uh, uh, so it's not very many that are left that can witness, witness to our experience in the YMCA. We've come a long way. And of course, Sister Terrell came along a little bit after that, and we certainly must continue to pray for Loretta uh, as we're going to continue to miss her uh, over the future years that are to come. I've had the privilege of meeting some great people, uh, some beloved people, some people that uh, made me grow up and made me mature. And I cherish every last one of you. I kid about Alabama all the time, looking at Laura sitting back there and Helen, and I kid about Alabama all the time, but there's some Alabama and Mississippi, but some good stuff came out of Alabama and Mississippi. So, got to give them credit for chopping cotton and milking cows. Certainly, it's a blessing to uh, be around people like that. Uh, we're sitting in a comfortable sanctuary on today. Um, go outside, it's cold, and you come inside, you don't have to keep your boots on. And... Uh, that's a blessing that the Lord has made possible for us. As this year comes to its conclusion, you will never see it again. We got to understand this. Every day that we live, enjoy that day to the fullest. You will never see it again. Um, <clears throat> sometimes we take the Lord for granted. And, uh, but when he pulls our blessings away, uh, then we realize that he has the final answer. And I want to say something to my young people, uh, you know, those who uh, I see Jed and Trey sitting over there and all the way up through uh, Nia, and, uh, all of our young people and some as they're, they're coming in. Let me say this to my young people. It seems that when we get to this time of year, uh, people want to party hardy. Party hardy. Nothing wrong with partying. Nothing wrong with that at all. It's just a matter you need to know who you're partying with. I want you to understand uh, what we're living in now. We're living in a time now where if you cross someone at your party, and uh, y'all have a little uh, conflict and so forth. Uh, people kind of act crazy now. They're kind of, you know, uh, not normal, insane. And you may go along and say, okay, they, they, when the conflict is over, you think it's all right. But the, that person may not think it's all right. And uh, so when it's all over, you may be leaving and getting on a train somewhere, going to Chicago or what have you. The reason I'm mentioning this is because there's been several shootings on trains in Chicago and 
uh, some getting, getting shot in the home, shooting through the window, and all of those kinds of things. People do not know how to handle anger now. Uh, they think the way to handle anger is to uh, through the barrel of a gun and take away somebody's life. We are we are an evil society collectively. Now we got more good people than we have bad people. But we got just enough bad apples in the barrel that will begin to affect all of the other apples in the barrel. It affects our living. It, it costs money to have insurance and all that kind of stuff. So young people, during the holidays, and I'm going to get this to those who listen to us electronically if you're on, on Tic Tac and all of that, so, uh, what have you. Uh, TikTok or whatever. Uh, you know, uh, see, everybody think it's hip uh, to be uh, intellectually uh, connected. But I don't see anybody learning anything of substance. I see a lot of foolish people uh, between the ages of 18 and 30. I, I, I think my group, we had some sense. Goodness gracious, we had some sense. We we established some stuff, but I, I just see a lot of foolishness now. And uh, we didn't think about going around shooting somebody. If I, if I lost, I just lost. Just got to be good at the game next time. Win next time. You know, that, that's, that's just what happens. Just like in the church. I've had some that, uh, you know, they became uh, disappointed at the church and they left. And then, then when I talk to them now, they wish they hadn't left. You know, you make decisions, you make your choices. You know, we we got to learn to grow up. And I want my young people to see uh, during the holidays, you, you know, you don't have it. You, the teacher maybe didn't give you any uh, homework, any homework assignments. Well, I, there's always an open assignment that I have for you. And all you got to do is pull out the dictionary. Yeah, just pull out the dictionary. Read the dictionary. You know, the things that we don't like to do are the things that will be most beneficial to us. See, that which we, the food that we don't like is usually the best food. You know, asparagus, and Brussels sprouts, black-eyed peas. My beloved son doesn't like black-eyed peas, but that's all right. He's going he gonna to grow up. He's still growing. He's still growing. He's still growing. He's still growing. He needs that. One day he's going to be glad to get a spoon of black eyed pea. But uh, sometimes the things that we don't like are just what's best for us. As you sit here in the house of worship, maybe there are other things you could have been doing. It was nice that bed was warm this morning. And you could have kept on sleeping. But must remember this. When you were sleeping and comfortably relaxed in your home. It was the Lord that gave you that comfort because you very well could have been such that you couldn't sleep. You could have to be in pain and sick, etc. But the Lord made all of that possible. And we take this stuff for granted. All right, uh, for just a moment. There's a concept of God that I want to share with you as we head toward the holidays and we get ready for... Twas the night before Christmas went all through the house and not a creature was stirring and not even a mouse. The stockings were all hung by the chimney with care in hope that St. Nicholas, Lord have mercy. It's amazing what we'll do for Santa Claus. Amen. And nothing for Jesus. We'll chase those reindeers. We'll put a new bulb in Rudolph's nose so he can see Lord have mercy. We'll shovel the snow on the roof so he won't slip and slide. Lord have mercy. Clean out the chimney so he can come down. Amen. Yeah. And leave us some gifts that we forgot what he gave us. That's right. That's right. I'll never forget one Christmas we had toys for, uh, I believe it was Terry. Yeah, yeah. Son. And, uh, and uh, after he got through, opened up and, and uh, the paper and he started playing with the box and the paper he, he didn't even play with the toys you know 
See, sometimes, well, you know, all you gotta, all you gotta do is just get some empty boxes and put some paper in it. And your children, they'll just love it. They'll jump over in the paper and play with the paper and so forth. It doesn't cost you a whole, you can get somebody to give you that. You ain't got to be running around getting all this stuff. Goodness me, they'll play, they'll play with the stuff that don't cost anything. And as a matter of fact, when you look back over your life, the stuff that didn't cost anything, that was what you really enjoyed the most anyway. And of course, the real enjoyment was the fellowship with your mother and your father and your siblings and, and the fun. That's where the, the, that's where the joy is, is the relationship with human beings. And in fact, as a matter of fact, that's why I like to come to work. I get a chance to see all of you every now and then. That's where the blessing really is, is in relationship and not in. All right, in Isaiah, for just a moment, I'm, I, I want to get you ready for the holidays. Uh, it's all about Jesus. It, it, it's not about the gifts you receive or the gifts you give. It, it's about Jesus. Uh, the older I become, there are two things that's always on my mind. One is time. The most valuable commodity that I have is time. I don't let people any longer waste my time. Now, we joke around, I kid around, but while I'm kidding around with you, I'm thinking about what I'm doing the next moment, you know, because my time is valuable. I don't have as much left as I had before. Uh, that, that's, that's being real. That's being real. So time is important. Health is also important. Lord, I mean, I'll eat a cinnamon roll every now and then, but I'm also thinking about health. And you have to maintain your health. If you don't have your health, you don't have anything. And, of course, you've got to have a relationship with Jesus. But there's something I have learned in my studies of, ho of Holy Written. That is, there's a concept of God. It seems like God functions this way. He will take his blessings, the things that's really important, and surrounded by curses. It seems that blessings are surrounded by curses. It seems that roses are surrounded by thorns. It seems that good pork ribs are surrounded by slop in a pig pen. It seems that he put a good family in the Garden of Eden, but then Satan shows up and pollutes the family. The family is important to God. Satan shows up and messes with the family. The church family. Satan shows up and messes with the church family. We got somebody here this morning. Somebody in our audience, our virtual audience. They're, they're not thinking right today because of Satan. Satan gets in the heart and messes up our thinking. Evil. Oh, man, oh. Noah found grace in the eyes of God. But you know what surrounded him? The evil thoughts of people. The Bible says man's thoughts were evil. Their imagination, they were imagining evil. Not only did they do evil, they imagined evil. And we're living in that time today where it seems like if there is no evil, people imagine that it's evil. They're talking about voter fraud. There ain't no voter fraud enough that you want to destroy the government. But they imagine that, there is, that nothing has changed. We're we, we still the same. Lord have mercy. Now that was Abram down in Ur of Chaldees. Surrounded by people who did not even believe in God. Think about this now. Abram did not believe and didn't even know who God was. Surrounded by non-belief. God reached down and plucked him spiritually and said, Abram, move out of Ur of Chaldees and go to a land that I will show you. The blessing was hid in Abram, but it was surrounded by non-belief. When I look at the siblings of Joseph, Lord, how my Joseph grew up with brothers and they couldn't get along together. 
Joseph was a dreamer. Young people, you've got to have a dream. You've got to dream of how you can reach your potential. you got to think beyond yourself. Be able to sit sometimes and meditate. Choose the could and think about where you could be because you are surrounded by evil. Joseph was a dreamer, but he was surrounded by his own brothers that tried to kill him. God had to reach down and slip him out and sold him to slavery down in Egypt to get him away from those who would kill him because God was protecting the blessing. See, sometimes God has to protect the blessing by moving the blessing out of the way. Sometimes in our families, God moves people we love out of the way to protect the blessing because we'll just kill it or we'll destroy it. Not only that, when the baby Christ child grows up and he gets to the cross, he's surrounded by two thieves. Oh, man. That's a concept of God. But God always protects the blessing. New Testament Christians, as we sit here today, and those who are listening to us, we are surrounded by wickedness, by worldliness, and wretchedness. We are surrounded. When you leave these doors and these shores and go about your business the rest of the day, you are surrounded by crookedness, by deception, by evil, and you don't know where it's going to come from, but you are surrounded by When you get to your job, when you're driving down the road, you just don't know where it is, but it's around everywhere. We have to understand that. In Isaiah chapter 7 through 10, God went to work. Now, God has always had a plan. Now, let me say something to you. This, you got one more Sunday this year. You need to start making your plans for 2023. And don't make your plans where you're going to take your vacation. Make your plans on how the Lord is going to impact your life and how you're going to help the Lord to impact your life in 2023. Because where you take your vacation is irrelevant to what the Lord has in store for you. Amen. It's amazing. We plan our vacation ahead of time. Oh, I got to get my tickets and all that kind of stuff. Like, you know, Lord have mercy. We plan our vacation. But we don't plan our worship. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of heaven, the concept of God. Blessings are surrounded by curses. You put a garden in, that's the blessing. But it's surrounded by the curse of the rabbits, the varmints, the insects, and the weeds. Isn't it amazing how weeds grow? Weeds will grow anywhere. Weeds don't even ask what kind of dirt is it. Weeds just grow. You can put some nice beans and tomatoes in your garden and the weeds will outgrow the blessing. All right, let's bring it on home to the, you can have some nice children in your family, but the weeds will grow around those children and choke them out. God had a nation called Israel and the weeds grew around Israel. As a matter of fact, the weeds were growing around Israel and God made a decision. I'm going to use the weeds to punish my people because they do not appreciate me. God called on Syria, the Assyrians. And God used the Assyrians which surrounded Israel because Israel disobeyed God. They didn't appreciate the worship. They didn't appreciate what God had done and how God had protected them for all of their legacy and all of their history, bringing them out of Egyptian bondage. They just didn't appreciate God and yet they appreciated. As a matter of fact, the king, the king Ahaz decided that he was going to have a league, a, a, a league or connect with the Assyrian king and God said I'm going to use the Assyrians to teach you a lesson sometimes God will take your enemy to teach you a lesson if that's what you want I'll give you what you want and then send you a strong delusion for accepting that 
and you'll pay the price for it. Look at the fall of God's people. In Isaiah chapter 9, uh, beginning with verse number 8 in the ninth chapter of Isaiah, watch this now. The Bible says, the Lord sent a word unto Jacob. Now, I want you to understand something about the Bible. Really, he didn't send it to Jacob. Jacob is dead. But really what he said, he sent it to Israel. Because Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Y'all understand what I'm saying? See, I, I want to help you to study your Bible. See, a lot of times what happens is people, when, when, when they don't, when they're not properly taught, they misapply scripture. All right? So he's, he's really sending, the, sending a word to Israel. And it has lighted. Notice what he said. Now, he actually explains it. And it has lighted upon what? Israel. So you see, Jacob's name was changed. See, Jacob, his name means deceiving, deceiver, deception. You know, a lot of times, you know, people's name, you associate their name with their behavior. When I say Al Capone, what do you think about? Somebody going to church? No, no, no. You think about somebody that's crooked. All right. You know, there's by, by certain names that, that you, you associate that with. When I say Michael Jordan, you know, okay, you know, you know, you know, we'll, let's fly with Mike. You know, okay, you know, when I say LeBron, you know, you, you know, you think about Serena. When I say Serena, you know, you, you think about the, the behavior. Amen. When I say Trump, ah, no, 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 you think about the president. Oh, yeah, that, that, you know, names are an association. Amen. All right. Now, the fall of God's people. They suffered past losses. Now, no, 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 notice what he says. And all the people shall know, even Ephraim and the inhabitant of Samaria, that say in the pride and stoutness of... Here's, here's what happens to us. We get pride and we get big and bad in our thinking. All right, you know, ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. I do what I want to do when I want to do it. You better check yourself when you start using those kind of words. Because somebody will break you down. And certainly the Lord will break you down. The Lord, the Lord always has the last answer. You know, you know how be, your, your mother is telling you to shut up. Lord, help me. Be quiet. I'm talking. See, somebody has the last word. Amen. Now, now you get big and bad. You get to the point where you know where you don't. You think you don't have to listen to your parents and so forth. But there will come a time when you walk by and see them lying in the casket. Oh, we started talking about it. It's too late now. See, some things you can't correct when the Lord steps in. The Lord corrects everything. He'll break you down. So that's why you need to get it right while you're alive. When you're blessed with blessings, understand they are surrounded by curses. And then as we look a bit further, no, he said the bricks, then look at verse number 10. The bricks are falling down, but we will build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. See, God's getting ready to go to work. Therefore, the Lord shall set up the advent. Now watch this here. The Lord will set up the enemies. See, sometimes God set, you, you, you ever wondered why it seems like you're having trouble in your life? It is because you have not sat down to analyze your life. And so what God does is he works out a deal with your enemy. Lord have mercy. You keep getting into trouble, doing the same thing, getting high on nothing, getting low on something, don't know where you is. The Lord will help you to be where you are to make you think about what you are not doing. So right there he says now, ah, the Lord says, therefore the Lord shall set up the adversaries arisen against him and join the enemies together. Now here's verse number 12. The Syrians before and the Philistines behind. All right now, people. You don't want to live by my rules and my regulations, God is saying. All right, you want to play? You want to party with, the, with, with them? You want, to, you want to have false gods? You want to have uh, worship that you, that, that you want to have? Do what you want to do? Live your life? I'm going to let you do it. As a matter of fact, 
I'm going to put them on a pedestal so that you'll enjoy while you're there, but you're going to pay for it. Amen. The older we become, we realize that we suffer from what we did not do. The things that we did not do, we suffer from it. So he goes on to say, uh, and they shall devour Israel. Look at there now. The very ones you hang in with, you want to party with, you want to run around, have a good time. Now the, the holidays are here. People get joyful and get jolly. I, I tell everybody now, I say, all right, the holidays are here now. Go home, go to bed. Let me tell you, the best time to go to bed is during the holidays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, do, do, go, go, go to bed. Get you a good meal. Go to bed. Amen. Read your Bible. Go to bed. Lord have mercy. Get up January 2nd. Go to worship now. Go to worship now. Don't the holiday. Worship the Lord. Go to bed. Go to work. Work. Worship. Rest. Work, worship, rest. During the holidays. Now don't get on the train and go down to Chicago. 63rd and Cottage Grove. See, don't, don't, don't go party. Now there's nothing, nothing wrong with a party. But see, the problem is the parties we go to, we get into trouble. We have parties at church. Every time we have a fellowship dinner, that's a party. But you know what? A lot of people leave. They leave the church party. You know why? We, we, we ain't, we ain't going to serve no libations. Yeah, 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 yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yeah, we have Diet Coke, Zero. My name is At Water. We got plenty of water. We got it out in the lobby. Plenty of water. And you can get hot on that water. Lord have mercy. That's, that's the fellowship there now. Don't cost you anything. But you'd rather go to a party where you got to pay a cover charge. Lord have mercy. Pay a cover charge. Get high and don't know how you got home. And bullets flying over your head. You don't know who's packing. We're living in a time now where everybody's packing. They pack in church. They pack outside the church. They pack on the job. Everybody's packed. If, if they don't have it only, they know exactly where they can get it from if they have to get it. So when I'm driving down now, you know, let's say if I cross somebody driving down the highway or what have you, I try to be as courteous and let them in. Because I don't want them turning around and shooting back at me. Like, let them have it. And nine times out of ten, the one that's trying to squeeze in in front of me, I get there at the same time they get there. You got to learn how to be patient and don't go anywhere. Don't go where everybody else is going. So the people, they suffered past loss. And judgment did not bring them to their knees. Look at verse 13 right quick. I mean, I, I mean I, the reason I'm going into Isaiah, I see Isaiah is the messianic prophet. Really, Isaiah is Jesus before he becomes flesh. Isaiah is dealing with Jesus. And in verse 13, it says, For the people turn not unto him that smiteth them, neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. People don't seek the Lord. Our sanctuary ought to be filled today. It ought to be filled. I've learned over time that people, the stuff that's best for people, they will not strive to obtain. Amen? The good things that, you know, when we had that uh, summit for our young men, we had about, you know, there was about 50 of us there. Great crowd, great crowd. But it should have been 500 that should have been there. But I'm of this persuasion now. I'm like, God, you give me a good 12, we can move a mountain. <laughs> Amen? The Lord just had 12. Just give him 12. They turned the world upside down. Because the Lord is the equivalent of 7 billion. See, when you got Jesus on your side, things can happen. And you don't want to know how you happen. I had somebody ask me, I wonder how y'all how y'all get that building over y'all head. I don't know how we got it. We in it. The Lord makes that possible. See, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to have to go get it now. See, some things you have to plan ahead. Amen. Because Jesus said, count up the cost. 
God is getting ready to make Israel pay for what they are not doing. And he calls in the enemy. Since they want to party with the enemy, all right, then God calls in the enemy. And, of course, he could not bring them to their knees. The, 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 the prior judgments did not bring Israel to their knees. Something else had happened, too. There was a lack of authority. Look at verse number 18 in this chapter. Uh, verse number 18 of chapter 9, it says, For the wickedness burneth as the fire. It shall devour the briars and thorns, and shall kindle in the thickets of the forest, and they shall mount up like the lifting up of smoke through the raft of the Lord. Now drop down to verse number 12, no, 21. Manasseh, Ephraim, and Ephraim, Manasseh, and they together shall be against Judah. For all this is anger, all this his anger is not turned away. But his hand is stretched out still. Now watch this now. Y'all ain't got this. Y'all don't have this now. Look at verse 12. Y'all see verse 12? But his hand is stretched out still. You see that? Now look at verse 17. But his hand is stretched out still. Look at verse 21. But his hand is stretched out still. Now watch this here. While you mess up his blessings and he then gives you what you want, his hand is still stretched out to give you the better package. Y'all got this? When you are devilish, his hand is still stretched out. Israel disobeyed him. He hired the Assyrians to come in and punish them and still his hand is stretched out. All right, now. Let, let, let me quickly give you out of this text, four valuable lessons of sin. Okay, let me tell you something about sin. First of all, sin, that's where you transgress the, law, the Lord's law. That's where you disobey the Lord, okay? Here's what sin does. It's a waste of power. Think about, think about it. The wrong stuff we do, we waste power. Let me, let me give you a prime example of what's going on right now. Look at our government right now. We got some people that keep filing suits to keep people from voting. And they keep getting knocked down. That's a waste of power. We got people who want to cross the border and come into this blessed country. Because they got a mean life where they come from. Everybody wants to come to the United States. But then we got some people in the United States that don't want them to come. When we need them. Amen. I see signs for jobs everywhere. Anybody that can't find a job, you're lying. There's something wrong with you if you can't find a job. Lord have mercy. We are too slothful, too lazy to help those that need to be helped. And what I'm afraid of, God's going to get tired of that stuff. God will make a pact with our enemy. If Putin can drop bombs in Ukraine. You think he can't drop bombs in Chicago? I just thought I'd drop that while I'm passing by. See, when people get crazy, they do crazy things. When you get full of pride, okay? So sin is a waste of power. All right? Let me give you point number two about sin. Sin is a suicidal thing. It leads to suicide. Suicides are up 
with military people. Suicides are up with our young people. Young people between the ages of 16 and 30, they're committing more suicides than ever before. They got more stuff than they've ever had. They got toys. They got cell phones. They got cars. They got the hip-hop shoes and the jeans. They got it all going on. They got the music. They got it all, and they're still committing suicide. And you know why it is? It is because they have no content on the inside. When I have no content on the inside, then I commit suicide. You don't have anything on the inside. You don't have any substance. You commit suicide. You kill yourself. They don't want to be around me. You spend all your time wanting stuff. But you don't spend any time building relationships with substance. And so you, then you kill yourself. That's what happened to Judas. Now think about Judas now. Judas could hug Christ, hang around Christ, shake his hand, walk with him, got his teachings, saw all of his miracles, etc. But yet he takes 30 pieces of silver. How stupid can you be? Sin leads to suicide. When the time came, he tried to give it back. And the devils that gave him the 30 pieces of silver didn't even want it back. Now this, this, this is where the dangerous territory is. When you start commiserating with people that are wrong, people that are sinful, people that don't want to do right, do you know they know what right is? Lord have mercy. They know what right is. They know when it's, when it's evil money. They know when it's... They know just as much as you know. And then you have to face it. You don't know who your friends are. You get down and out and try to borrow some money. If they loan it to you, they want your neck, your head, and everything else as a guarantee. Goodness gracious sakes a lot. <laughs> all right, all right. So number one, sin, sin is suicidal. Also, number three, sin is a divine penalty from God. See, God deals in the divine, not the material. And it's a penalty that's sitting out there that you will pay for. You know what? Have you noticed? Let, let, let me step aside for just a moment. I want to help you to see something here as we wrap this lesson up. You notice Joe Biden's ratings are starting to go up? Wise people realize that he's the best man for the times that we're in because he's cool, calm, collected. He knows everybody around the world. He's the best man for the time. Amen. And I don't care whether he's Democrat or Republican or what he is. He's the best man for the time. Amen. Because of what is getting done. While we're fighting racism, voting, misapplying scripture, got preachers standing in the pulpit trying to use the Bible to justify what they're doing. When the Lord spent all of his time trying to help the poor, the least of these, take away the taxes from the rich, put the tax on the little bit, little man. Lord have mercy. Do, do, do y'all read? See, what, what you got to do now, now you have to do some reading. I, I, and, let, and by the way, don't rely on the internet. The internet is just a guide, but don't rely because there's a lot of crooks on the internet. As a matter of fact, they're getting, they're getting ready to take TikTok. You know, take, well, let, 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 me, let me just move on. Let me, let me just move on. Y'all not here. Okay. The, fact, the, the fourth lesson of sin is, here's the fourth lesson of sin. You're never satisfied. Sin will not satisfy you. You go out, you get high, you still don't get high enough. Lord, have mercy. 
Now, let's, let, let's see if we can find the blessing. We know where the curse is now. The Assyrians, they are the curse. They're going to destroy God's people. But now let's see what the blessing is. Well, deliverance is in the Messiah. When you look at this Isaiah chapter 7 through 10, 7, 8, 9, 10, in there, you got to be able to find the blessing, all right? I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure y'all have read this. If you haven't read it, you ought to read it by the time, by the time uh, we get out of here now. But let me, let me, let me pluck the blessing for you right quick. Go to Isaiah chapter 9 now. You notice I skipped that. I started at verse 8. But now let's go back to verse number nine, chapter 9 and look at verse number 6. Now, in verse number 6, here's the blessing. It says, For unto us a child is born. Now watch this. Now you know it's speaking in present tense, right? Unto us a child is born. Jesus is in the yesterday, the today, and the tomorrow all at the same time. He's there. He's there. We just can't see him, but he's there. But he says now, for unto us a child is born. All right. Now watch this here. Uh, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Now let, let, let me just articulate this verse for you. The child means that there's a virgin birth that will come. So Isaiah, 700 years before Christ, is talking about a virgin birth that's going to come. That's the blessing. See, the current, the blessing is surrounded by Assyrians coming in and trying to destroy Judah. The tribe that Christ came through is Judah. Judah is one of the sons of crooked Jacob, but Judah is the righteous one, the righteous tribe that Jesus came through. That's where the blessing lies. It's not in Assyria. Now, what, what are the people doing? What are the church folk trying to do right now? Right now, what are you all trying to do? Brother Adwater, when are you going to get done so I can get out of here? Now, when you get out of here, what are you going to do? Go to the shopping center, spend all your money, and you're going to have no more money. I know what you're going to do. Nothing of value. Amen. So while I got you, I got to talk to you. That's my task. I don't want you getting up before the judgment. You know what, brother? That water didn't tell me anything. Lord, I'm going to look you in the eye. You are a liar. Lord have mercy. <laughs> All right, now let's, let's, let's look at the blessing now. A child. Now watch this. What, what else did it say there? A son is given. Son given? That's Christ on the cross. Because he gave his life. All right, what else does it say? Wonderful counselor. That means he's a man of wisdom. Y'all want some wisdom? Talk to Jesus. You having trouble paying your bills? Talk to Jesus. I told somebody recently, I said, you have some highs and you have some lows. When you talk to Jesus, he'll send you through some lows to get you ready for the highs. See, if you start high, You'll destroy yourself because you don't know how to handle it when you're high. But when you have a little high and then you drop low, you say, I ain't going to do that no more. Right? Unless you're a fool. Now, some fools will gamble away their money, get sovereign again, and then go back to Las Vegas. That's a fool. See, if you did it once, you don't do it the same way again. That's a fool. If you got drunk and had a wreck, you don't do it again. Am I right? I, I know my amen is getting kind of thin. Okay, I, I guess I'm, I'm going to have to have to put some on my, my recording now and give me some amens. Because you know I'm smacking you up right upside the head. I haven't been in anybody's house. I don't know what you got in your house, but I know how you think. And I know how you are. I know what you do. Because I'm a human being too. Right now, I got four bottles of wine and one bottle of bourbon. It's been there now for about four years. I just look at it. But what the reason I look at it is 
that tells me I wanted you a good guy. Because first of all, you got it. You haven't used it. And every now and then I might show it to somebody and say, look, I got, I got some stuff here. Hey, what you going to do with it? I'll pull it out. Why are you going to give it to me? I ain't going to give you what I don't use. Why would I give you what I don't use? So I use it. I use it it's, it's a lesson teacher. It's a, it's a teacher. All right. Now, now look, wonderful counselor. He's a man of wisdom. What else does the verse say? He's a mighty God. That's deity. What else does it say? El everlasting Father. He's an eternal, omnipotent power. What else does it say? Prince of Peace. That means victory. That's the blessing right there in verse number six. Let me help, let me help you out like this here in terms of our mission and it, Christ is the blessing and curses are surrounding the blessing. Well, Jesus, Jesus, he is the branch of the Lord. Jesus, the baby child Jesus is Emmanuel. That's God with us. He is the illuminator. He is the branch of David. He is a tried stone. He's the glory of the Lord. He's God's elect. He's God's wise, righteous servant. He's a light of the Gentiles to liberate us into freedom. He's the arm of the Lord. He is a tender plant, as Isaiah said. He's a root out of dry ground. He is a comely savior. He is, he is a beautiful and rejected Messiah. He is a man of sorrows. He is wounded, uh, a wounded substitute. Jesus, the, the baby Christ Jesus, he is the sin bearer. He is the silent sufferer. He's the cut off bread. He is the stricken shepherd. He's the offering for my sin. He's the satisfied redeemer. He's the body of Christ. He is the holy one of Israel. He is our salvation. He is our redeemer. He is the last answer. He's the finisher. He's the alpha and the omega and not the sigma. Lord have mercy. But yet he is a capital because I am one. I'm a Christian. I just thought I'd drop that while I'm passing by. Jesus is on our side. And we got to understand that where the blessing is the curse surrounds the blessing there might be somebody in the audience right this morning this morning you want to get your life together you want to get your life together this morning you got to come to Jesus and I don't care what they say you got to put him first if you want to be baptized today come to Jesus some people say you don't have to be baptized to be saved. I don't care what people say. What does Jesus say? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. You got to repent. We all have history. I'm looking across this audience right now. If we go back and check your history, you got some mess in your history. You got some stuff you don't like. But Jesus can clean it up. He can remove the guilt. That's repentance. You got to be willing to say that he is the son of God. And you got to be buried in baptism. And once you come out of baptism, you got to start being faithful. We got too many people that come in late and leave early. You come in late and you leave early. I have no control over that. In fact, I don't want control over that. Jesus has that control. If he's valuable enough for you, you get here on time. We start on time. We'll finish on time. Amen? I tell you what, we start on time and we'll finish when we get done. How's that sound? Yeah, 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 yeah. We start on time and finish when we get done. That'll, that'll, that'll bless you. Because sometimes you need to stay overtime. See, in your job, oh, I'm, I got overtime now. You know, you know, it's amazing. We'll work overtime because we're going to get triple pay, whatever. During the holidays, some people are going to work on Christmas Day. They ain't going to come to church. They're going to work on, oh, I'm going to get triple time. I'm going to get triple time. They're going to get that triple time check. Uncle Sam is going to get his chunk out of it. 
The Lord not going to get any out of it. And when it's all said and done, you wasted your time because you didn't get off any. You know, you're no better off now than you were when you done. You might as well have come on to worship service and given to the Lord. And the Lord can give you a return on your investment that is better than you, your triple time that you got when you missed the Lord. Because you're going to pay for that someday down the line. And all of you need a midweek Bible class. You got your car, right? You pull in, you get gas on Saturday. At some point, you got to refill. And you pull in on Thursday and refill. Let's bring it to Jesus now. You come in on Sunday late. You got, you got, a, you got a half a tank. Now you need to come back on Wednesday to finish filling the tank. Why do I got to come in the middle of the week? Because you need Jesus in the middle of the week. Because when you leave here, you're not going to really focus on him like you ought to. That's what the Bible class is for. To get you refilled. As we end this year, the Lord blessed you to come through COVID. You didn't come through COVID because you're so healthy. Do you know there are people that got COVID and they're still suffering from COVID? COVID has long-term impact. If you came through and you didn't get it, the Lord blessed you and you owe him a return on your blessings. There's always a curse around our blessings. Let us all stand. Brother Slay, would you come forward? There might be somebody that wants to respond to the invitation. May God bless you. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. You know that I'm so glad that Jesus Jesus 